are living in a really strange time. I, I, it feels like uh, the demonic forces have unleashed a torrent from hell on earth to every person, pointed towards every person that thinks they're going to do something for God. Have you felt the pressure uh, on your flesh, on your mind, on your emotions, perhaps even relationally? And we need to be on our P's and Q's spiritually. We are in an, an intense battle. It's not the time to lay down your armor. It's not time to lay down your weapon. And it's not time to retreat. How many hear me? It's time to move forward. So I'm talking about gifts of the Spirit um, and the backdrop of this, I, I need to say this over and over again, and I will and am, uh, the backdrop of this is God has promised that there's going to be a tremendous move of the Spirit before Jesus comes back, and it feels like we're right on the very edge of that happening, and I, are you excited about that? <clears throat> and I just want to, and I'm going to say some things over and over again, and I need to say this over and over again because it's absolutely true. Uh, it has been prophesied starting with Joel in Joel 2 and then Isaiah in Isaiah 60 that before Jesus comes back, darkness would cover the earth, but there would be a great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Joel said it this way, and it gives us an indication of what the world is going to be like before Jesus comes back. It's not going to be a, one, a time of wonderfulness where everybody's getting along. It's going to be a time of hell on wheels, and we're entering into that time right now. The truth is it looks like from Scripture it's going to be a time of war, and we're going into a time of war right now. Did you know that? Are you aware? So I'll talk more about that in a second, but let me share this. Uh, and this is Joel, uh, after doing these things, I'll pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your old men will dream dreams, your young men will see visions. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike. Then here's the kicker, um, I will cause wonders in the heavens and on earth. Then this next phrase gives you an indication of what the times will be like, blood and fire and columns of, fo of smoke. What is that a reference to? It's a reference to war. The, the war drums are beating right now, if you're not aware of it. The news media in America is doing us a tremendous disservice in not sharing what's going on with Ukraine and Russia. Now, I read, and I've told you this before, lots of different things, but the things I'm reading is, and there's so many nations now that are preparing their the, the populace of their nations for war. They're telling people to get uh, some supplies, get some food. Uh, stay. They're telling them what to do honestly if a nuclear bomb strikes. They're tell Did you know that? Uh, the nations of Europe, Russia just put out a, a pamphlet for every citizen of the Russian Federation to tell them what to do in the event that there's a nuclear disaster and telling them where to go, what to do in specific detail, and then telling them what not to do. And so uh, the nations of Europe are doing the same thing, and there's some big saber rattling going on. So it, we are in a time um, not unlike the time of Noah. He prepared 120 years for a flood. Uh, and God kept warning people through him, it's going to rain, it ain't going to be good, get right. And uh, in a similar time of Joseph, uh, Joseph spent seven years storing grain so the uh, world wouldn't starve to death during a, a tremendous drought and famine uh, during his time. And so we're in a, a similar time that you need to be prepared. So I'm not a conscionable pastor if I didn't say to you, and I've said it so many times, Please make sure you do I just can't encourage you enough. Be a practical person. Get you some food. Get you some water that you can drink. Uh, get you some cash. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, maybe even some precious metals because cash may be no good one day. And just be ready for whatever. I don't know when it's going to happen. Nobody does. But the eventuality is not looking good in the natural. But here's what's going to happen. The, the moment this kind of stuff occurs, the very power of God's going to be here on the church. I can feel it rising in the atmosphere now, and there's a tremendous tension between the spiritual in the spiritual realm between the forces of God, the kingdom of God, and the forces of the enemy. And the enemy's doing his best to snuff out uh, the, the mark that Jesus placed in the earth and to hinder us, but he can't do it because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world, right? So I said all that to go into my subject, talk about the gifts of the Spirit. God led me. Oh, a good while ago to talk about spiritual gifts on um, Wednesday night so that we can be prepared to be used by the Holy Spirit. So again, let me read what I've been reading the last number of times. This is lesson number eight 
uh, God's power through spiritual gifts. Tonight, we're going to talk about the gifts of healings. And I'm going to read this every night just for context, 1 Corinthians 12, 4. There are differences of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. There are differences of diversities of activities, but it's the same God that works all the gifts and all the ministries, okay? And that means in every person in the body of Christ. But the manifestation or outshining or shining forth of the spirit, that means when it, when it happens, the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So he manifests himself to help people. That's what he's saying. Verse 8, For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings. We'll talk about that tonight by the same Spirit. To another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. And so... Um, years ago, there was a wonderful man of God back in the early 20th century that was actually in prison during the First World War as a conscientious objector, and God used him. He studied the Bible while he was there because he didn't want to fight. He didn't believe in it. That was his, that was his personal belief system, whether you like it or not. And, and God, he studied, but God gave him a way to, to specifically categorize spiritual gifts so we can understand them well. So he found out there are three gifts that reveal something. We call them the revelation gifts. And we've talked about those on Wednesday nights in past lessons. This online, if you didn't hear it, the word of wisdom. The word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, they all reveal something that God knows. The second uh, category of spiritual gifts is gifts that do something. That is the power gifts. And uh, we're in the middle of talking about those now. We've talked about the gift of faith, the working of miracles, uh, and then the gifts of healings. Now, there are healing miracles, and I mentioned this last time, but the working of miracles, it literally uh, uh, changes the, the laws of physics, and God overrides the natural laws that he set up to govern the earth, and, and just he just messes with them. Gravity doesn't work, or the normal things that happen don't happen, and it overrides nature. That's the working of miracles. And I, I got a feeling we're going to see that in the days to come. One thing before I even go there I forgot to do, and I wanted to do this, and I think I have time, is I wanted to read an excerpt since uh, I said that there's going to be a tremendous move of the Holy Spirit just before Jesus comes back. Joel mentioned it. Isaiah mentioned it. You know, darkness will cover the earth and deep darkness the people, but the Lord will arise over you in Isaiah 60, verses 2 and 3, and, um, and his glory will be seen upon you. Uh, back, in, uh, back in 1950, and I re read this at our prayer meeting Saturday, and I've read this uh, uh, so many times, I almost feel weird reading it again, but Kenneth Hagin has a book entitled, I Believe in Visions, where Jesus appeared to him eight times in the 1950s, and he just chronicles and categorizes the eight experiences where Jesus uh, appeared to him in the 1950s. September of 1950, Jesus appeared to him and, took, and, and spoke to him very clearly. And I'm just reading one little section. Um, <clears throat> uh, anyway, I'm just going to cut to the chase. And Jesus went on to say, as he said several things to him, all the gifts of the Spirit, listen, will be in operation in the church in these last days. And the church will be, do greater things than even the early church did. It will have greater power, signs, wonders than were recorded in the Acts of the Apostles. He said that we have seen and experienced many healings. And the healing revival in the 1940s and 50s it was in force when Jesus appeared to him then. And he was actually uh, doing a tent meeting outside when Jesus appeared to him. And he, but he said... Um, uh, he said, we have seen and experienced many healings, but now we will behold amazing miracles. More and more miracles will be performed in the last days, which are just ahead. For the time, the gift of working of miracles will be in more prominence. We've now, now entered into the era of the miraculous. And then he made this comment. Jesus made this comment that Brother Hagin said, many of my own people, listen, will not accept the moving of my spirit. Now that, does that bother you? Uh, and will turn back and not be ready uh, to meet me at my coming. Many will be deceived by false prophets and miracles of satanic origin, but follow the word of God, the spirit of God, and me, Jesus said, and you'll not be deceived. I'm gathering my own together and am preparing them uh, for the time is short. So what we've seen in the last number of years has been a real pulling back, particularly in the Western, in the Western churches in the West, particularly in the United States. We've put the power of God to the side. 
And y'all, it's time to bring it back to the forefront. So what you're seeing in our service is I'm going to let the Holy Spirit move. And uh, Brother Hagin, when I lived in Tulsa eight years, I go to his meetings, he'd say, most pastors wouldn't know the Holy Ghost if it came down the middle aisle with a red hat on. He said it a lot. And so, you know, but I'm a, I, I'm, I want to know him, do you? And I want him to manifest so that people can be ministered to. And we all need to learn his presence. How many hear me? And we'll get into that a little bit more. But I wanted you to hear what uh, Kenneth Hagin said. Then there's a book I have entitled The Pioneers of Faith by Lester Summerall. And in that book, uh, over the uh, tenure of his ministry in the 20th century, the early and middle 20th century, uh, he died in 1996 at age 83. Uh, but he traveled the world to over 100 nations and preached the gospel all over the place. And the Pioneers of Faith uh, chronicles many of the relationships he had with the uh, Pioneers of Faith. He calls them, one of them was Smith Wigglesworth, who lived in England. He visited his home before Smith Wigglesworth died, and Smith Wigglesworth prayed for him. So here's an excerpt from his book where Smith Wigglesworth literally laid laid hands on Lester Sumrall as a 30, 31, 32-year-old young boy and prayed over him, and prophesied over him, and here's what he said. Uh, Then he stopped a moment. I'm right in the middle of the conversation that he's having in the book. Then he stopped a moment, opened his eyes, he being Smith, Smith Wigglesworth, wonderful evangelist. I wish to tell you something, he said, and his eyes looked as Elijah's must have when he saw the chariots of fire coming. I said, yes, he exclaimed. I see it, I see it. I asked, what do you see? Shutting his eyes. He said, I see the greatest revival in the history of mankind coming to planet Earth. Maybe as never before, I see the dead raised. I see every form of disease healed. Now, this one really shocks me, and I don't know what to do with this next sentence. I don't know what to say, but here's what he said. I see whole hospitals emptied out with no one there. What do you do with that? I don't know what to do with that. That that seems... My mind says that seems impossible, but it's not impossible with God, right? Uh, Even the doctors are running down the streets shouting. Now, we've certainly never seen that. He told me there would be untold numbers of unaccountable multitudes that would be saved. No man will say so many, so many, because nobody will be able to count those who come to Jesus. No disease will be able to stand Before God's people, it'll be a worldwide situation, not local, he said, a worldwide thrust of God's power and God's anointing on the earth. So uh, the context, it looks like we're we're just before that happening. And that's the reason there's such a, a, a challenge. And do you feel the pressure? Tell me, do you? Well, well, if you're gonna walk with God, you're gonna feel it and you gotta stand against it and just resist it in Jesus' name and press through. The main way to do that is have an effective time in the Word. Don't just pray, it's not enough. You've got to be in the Word. The Word's the foundation for a successful prayer life. If all you do is pray, you might go down. But if you'll get in the Word, stand on God's Word, walk by faith, and then pray, that produces the context for an effective prayer life, right? So uh, that's uh, the background of what I'm talking about tonight in spiritual gifts tonight, the gifts of healings. And I'm not going to even try to cover all the notes. My notes are online. You can go to victorychurchraleigh.com and get them. Uh, So by definition, the gifts of healings, the supernatural healing of diseases and infirmities without natural means of any kind. Now I've got to say this. Uh, Susan worked at City of Faith in Tulsa uh, she started working there in 1983. In fact, we had Thanksgiving, our Thanksgiving meal in their cafeteria in 1983 because Susan worked there. She was a medical technologist. And, you know, um, Oral Roberts had, had a vision of, of combining prayer and medicine, that is having an environment where doctors can come in with their expertise and pray and do the natural things to augment the spiritual things. And I think that's a great thing. Again, I, I jogged in there's the fitness center. One of our children was born in the city of faith. Susan worked there for several years. So you know, I thought that was, a, but that's not the same as the gifts of healings. And they never said it was. So don't think what I'm trying to get you to see is gifts of healings has nothing to do with medical intervention at all. You understand? Has nothing to, it has everything to do with God's power touching you. 
in a supernatural way by the Holy Spirit. So again, uh, again in 1 Corinthians 12 there, it's not the gift of healings. It's gifts of healings, plural. And it's actually the only spiritual gift that is plural. And there, perhaps there's a good reason for that. Um, there are different kinds of diseases, and so there are different uh, gifts of healings for the varied kinds of diseases that attack mankind and experience and those that I've read after, and I have a, a good number of books on gifts of the Spirit. It's, it's a bit of a challenge to find, find ones today. Uh, some, some are coming out now, but in yesteryear, particularly during the healing revivals that hit the United States in the 1940s and 1950s, there was a plethora of books that came out on the subject of, of gifts of the Spirit and, and the healing power of God that really explained things well. Of course, I one of the three Bible schools I've attended is Kenneth Hagin's, and of course, he was used by God in the gifts of healings. Uh, profusely, and he would talk about them at length. So uh, uh, it helped me as a young man gain some understanding of how these gifts manifest and what they uh, look like. But in the gifts of healings, the gifts, plural, of healings, plural, um, it, it, what I found in my research, and I've actually seen it and experienced it myself, God will use one person uh, specifically with one certain uh, set of illnesses and another person in the gifts of healings with a completely different set of of uh, of of illnesses. Does that make sense? So, for instance, Kenneth Hagin would always say he started a a prayer and healing school in 1979 on the campus of his Bible school, and uh, and <clears throat> he, by his own admission, said, "I have great success uh, with getting people healed from cancerous tumors." Or, or, or any kind of tumor in the physical body. He said, he said he just had lots and lots of people that would come, and even to his crusades, because he would travel all over the nation and minister and preach and teach and then lay hands on the sick. He said a lot of people would be healed of cancer and tumors, and, and that was him. I, there was another evangelist in Tulsa. Um, uh, deafness would be healed. Uh, when he started preaching, suddenly this gift, gifts of healings would manifest. In fact, 1981, he came to our church at, uh, uh, it was actually a morning service uh, at, at Grace Church in Tulsa. And, um, uh, and I was sitting with Susan, wasn't on staff yet. I was attending Bible school and attending the church. And I was sitting on, I still remember where I was sitting. And this evangelist um, uh, began to minister and uh, and he looked right over at our section, and he said, "Is somebody right over there? Your ear right now just popped, and you are healed. You were deaf. And y'all, I mean, two rows ahead of us, a guy, everybody's sitting down, listening to the guy speak, Sunday morning service. Uh, this guy in front of us was an usher. He became animated, jumped up. I've never seen a guy jump that high. He jumped and hollered. I mean, Sunday morning, jumped and hollered, woo, you know. And the guy told him, said, come up front, what happened? He said, he said, when I was 12 years old, I had a diving accident, and I ruptured my eardrum, and I went deaf, and I've never been able to hear out of this ear since. I think it might have been his right ear, whatever. And he said, but I can hear as clear as I can in my left one out of my right one now. And he was so excited. So, you know, I just said all that to say these gifts are that way for me, for many years now, if you got a problem, if when this manifests, doesn't happen if it doesn't manifest, but when this gift, gifts of healings manifest with me, it's anything that has to do with the digestive tract. Uh, if I can just get my hands on you, it, um, it, 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 it'll go. It usually isn't instantaneous, but it just kind of eeks away, it peters away, it goes away quickly. Sometimes it's instant, most of the time gradually subsides and it's really amazing so that's just the way these kind of gifts work um, there are two different ways and I have this in the notes but I'm not going to cover it much two different ways to be healed and you just got to understand the difference uh, one kind of healing is where God uh, God orchestrates and starts the healing process from stem to stern he does it the person has nothing to do with it they just receive and that's gifts of healings and that's the that's healing by the power of God. But there's another way to be healed by your own faith. How many know it's, it's different? That is, you initiate the healing, 
You build up your faith in God's word. You know that Jesus took your infirmities and bear your sicknesses and you either have someone pray for you or you believe you receive yourself. You pray for yourself and you believe God for your healing. That has nothing to do with spiritual gifts. It has everything to do with faith. You may not be healed if you're waiting on gifts of the spirit to manifest. You gotta know that. But you can always be healed by faith in God, your own faith in God in his word. Yes or no? Just got to know that. We had a, I get all these things coming to my mind when I get to talking. This is uh, 1983. I had a, I visited five hospitals every week in Tulsa to help the ministry as a volunteer position. So I took my day off and I frequented five hospitals in the Tulsa area to visit people. Um, not only people in our large congregation uh, who were in the hospital, but then their relatives and family members and such. And many of those people didn't attend church. One of the people that I went to minister, I'll never, this one's pretty much etched inside me for life. Uh, one of our board members' wife, wife um, had been very ill, and, and this guy I just mentioned, his name was Dave Roberson, and uh, she was healed under his ministry. I mean, dynamically. She was actually healed of cancer under his ministry as well. He didn't just have that thing for ears, but cancers would be healed. And she was, uh, this board member of the church's wife was completely healed of cancer. Well, a cancer not related to the first one that was healed by gifts of the Spirit um, uh, erupted in her body. And, uh, and by the time that I found out, she was already in the hospital And so they asked me to go see her. So her husband was there again. He was a a astute businessman, a man of means, and a very wise man, very quiet man. Uh, And uh, he met me at the door of the room, and I went in to pray for his wife. I spoke to her briefly, but I could tell she was reticent to talk to me. She she didn't want to say a whole lot. And, And so he said, come here. And he told me the story that she had been healed when an evangelist came to our church with gifts of healings one time, about five years prior, but this terrible uh, cancer had, had come on her body in another place, and the doctor said it wasn't related to the first one. That's what they said. And, uh, and here's what he told me. He said, she is expecting for gifts of healings to manifest just the way they did the first time. And that's what I felt when I entered the room. She was really resistant to talk to me. She died. Now, that, that bothered me, that shocked me. But see, she, she, she put her, she, she, it was misplaced faith. She, she was wanting another gift of the Spirit to manifest. You hear what I'm saying? When, when, when it would have been better for her, and she would probably maybe be here today if she had developed her own faith and, and been healed and believed God. How many hear what I'm saying? So you can't ride another person's faith constantly. At, uh, just like, you know, you can only feed your kids when they're little. At some point, it's, if they're eight years old and you're feeding them, something is wrong, dude. Or you're giving them a shower or, or you're helping them go to the bathroom. There is a problem. And it's the same way spiritually. God expects you to grow up, right? But a lot of people spiritually, they want somebody else to do for them lifelong and they never develop. And if you don't develop your own faith, you're going to get in trouble one day. How many hear what I just said? Maybe I should say that again. If you don't develop your own faith, you are going to get in trouble one day because you always need faith, either for yourself or for someone else. And that's been my experience in life. So my encouragement in is gifts of the Spirit are amazing. Gifts of healings are amazing. Uh, Raymond T. Ritchie, who was an evangelist during the healing revivals, uh, coined the phrase, divine healing is the dinner bell that brings sinners into the family of God. And farmers of yesteryear, uh, we actually had one. I worked in tobacco when I was 12, 13 years old, crop tobacco, be out in the field. And, um, and the farmer's wife, uh, we bunch people in the barn, you know, and driving the tractor and people like me, uh, sometimes I would crop the tobacco, sometimes I'm in the barn. But she had this triangle outside of her house. You know what I'm talking about, right? And she put this, she had this big piece of steel. Ding, 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 ding. When she rang that triangle, man, it's time, time to eat. And she had the biggest plate of vegetables you ever seen in your life. And we'd have chicken or ham or whatever. And uh, when she rang that thing, we went to run it. We said, well, we better run because the vegetables were amazing. Corn and beans and butter beans and squash and tomatoes. You hungry yet? And uh, it was just really amazing. 
So, so when he said divine healings, the dinner bell, that's what he's saying. You hear the dinner bell and run. And when, when uh, people that don't know the Lord find out God's healing power is available, they come running. And we have, haven't had a strong demonstration of God's healing power in a long time in America. There have been pockets of it here, pockets of it there. But what we're, I'm understanding is there's going to be a deluge of the power of God. It's probably going to erupt uh, right when all hell breaks loose with war. That's, what I, that's why I said we're right on the verge. And y'all, they are beating the drums of war now uh, in, in Ukraine, Russia. And that can easily spread worldwide. How many hear me? Uh, one of my board members says this all the time, peace is an illusion. <laughs> So just be aware that things are not as they appear. In our news media, I'm, I'm upset with them because they're not telling us the truth and they're not emphasizing what needs to be emphasized for our safety. Did you hear me? So, so, so have enough sense as an ant. Prepare, or a squirrel. Prepare for the, for the lean times. Hear me? Enough of that. So at the same time, that in my prayer time, that's when I sense the power of God is going to explode. Gifts of healings are going to be part of that. So gifts of healings come independently from God. They're not dependent on the faith of the person receiving. And um, so uh, J- Jesus manifested all of the gifts of healings in one person. John 3.34 is significant for whom God sent has uh, speaks uh, has sent speaks the words of God for God does not give the spirit uh, by measure to him uh, New Living Translation for he sent he is sent Jesus is sent by God he speaks God's words for God gives him the spirit without limit we have the spirit with limit how many understand Jesus had all of the Holy Spirit had all of the gifts of the Spirit commensurate with the time that he lived seven of the nine. Uh, there was no tongues and interpretation during that dispensation of time. That's for the church age. But he operated fluently in all the rest. And all the gifts of healings manifest in his life. Go through the Gospels and every time again that Jesus healed someone or raised someone from the dead or cast uh, demonic spirits out. Gifts of the Spirit were in manifestation. It's not that he didn't do that because he was the Son of God. He did it because he was a man submitted to God, anointed by the Holy Ghost. How many understand? And that's the reason that works that he did, we can do also, he said in John 14, right? Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit with power, who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So here are some of the uses of the gifts of the Spirit according to the Scriptures. Number one, to deliver the sick and destroy the works of the devil in the human body. Matthew 8, 1 through 3, uh, Jesus had just spoke... uh, Uh, The Sermon on the Mount came down from the mountain where he was talking to his disciples. When he came down from the mountain, verse 1, Matthew 8, great multitudes followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. And so he cleaned up his theology immediately because some people think it's not the will of God for you to be healed. So Jesus cleaned up that theology immediately, put his hands out, touched him, saying, I'm willing to be cleansed immediately his leprosy was cleansed. So there again, that was the gifts of healings in manifestation, and it delivers the sick and destroys the work of the devil in in the human body. Number two, to authorize the gospel message as preached by God's servants. Again, gifts of the Spirit, gifts of healings manifest. It's uh, it's the dinner bell for sinners to come to a Savior. Acts 4, 29 and 30, now look on their threats um, uh, and grant to your servants This is Peter praying that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of your holy servant Jesus. In the next chapter 5, power of God erupted and even the shadow of Peter healed people as it fell on them in the streets. Acts chapter 8 verses 6 and 7 and multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip. He was an evangelist hearing and seeing the miracles which he did for unclean spirits, crying out with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed and there was great uh, joy in the city. So again, uh, the gifts of healings are commensurate with the, the 
a true God-called evangelist. You'll see them manifest more in that ministry perhaps than any other ministry because they're out where the unbelievers, where the sinners are, we say. Uh, Mark 16, 15 through 18. And he said, Jesus said to them, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they'll cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents if they drink any deadly thing. It will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. How many know that's not just for a pastor, it's for every one of us in this room? And if you're watching on camera, how many hear me? Uh, third, number three, to draw people within the sound of the gospel. John chapter six, verse two, when healings occur, listen, then a great multitude followed Jesus because they saw the signs which he performed on those that were diseased. Again, it's the dinner bell that draws unbelievers into the sound of the gospel. Next, number four, I think, to turn people to God. Acts chapter nine, same kind of theme. That came to pass as Peter went through all the parts of the country uh, that he also came down to the saints who dwelt in Lydda. There he found a certain man, Aeneas, Aeneas, who had been bedridden eight years and was paralyzed. Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Arise, make your bed. Then he arose immediately. There's gifts of healings manifesting. So all who dwell at Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. See, it draws people that don't know the Lord to him. Um, and, and so uh, it, it just does tremendous things in bringing people to the Lord. Here are here, here's some of the uh, manifestations of the gifts of healings in Jesus' ministry. I'll mention a couple of these, and as we conclude, I want to show you a video that's really good. John chapter 5, um, now there was at the Feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And they were, there is in Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate a pool, uh, who is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. Now, when I visited Jerusalem in 2012, I actually saw this place. It's right, it's right on, on one of the main thoroughfares in, in Jerusalem there. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water for, and, and you know, whether this was true or not, this is what the Jews thought was, was happening. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now there was a certain man there who had an infirmity 38 years. Uh, When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, sir, I had no man put me into the, water, uh, into the pool when the water stirred up because I thought an angel touched the water and then they'd be healed. Um, but while I'm coming, another man steps down before me. Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And he did. Gifts of healings manifest. Matthew 4. Now this is, when you read this in, in the Gospels, understand that uh, this is verbiage that, that shows you gifts of healings were in really strong manifestation for all kinds of sicknesses, illnesses, and diseases. Matthew 4, 23, Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing how many? All kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria. They brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases, torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them. So again, all were healed. See, that's the huge manifestation of the gifts of healings. Matthew eight sixteen. when the evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed. He cast out the spirits with the word and healed all. See, the emphasis is all who were sick. Matthew nine thirty five. Jesus went about the cities, villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every, the emphasis is every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Uh, Matthew 10, 1, when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Now, Matthew twelve fifteen again, it's just so much of this. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew from there. Great multitudes followed him and he healed them all. When you see those kinds of references in the four Gospels, understands this gift, that it's gifts of healings that 
uh, came into manifestation. There's also healing. I'll just cover this a little bit and stop. Uh, there's also healing where Jesus ministered healing, not with gifts of the Spirit, but he recognized a person's faith, and their faith draw, drew the power of the Holy Spirit out of Jesus, drew the healing power out. See, that, that's a healing that a person's faith initiates. Gifts of healings, God initiates it. This was a Sunday night service, maybe 1985 or 6. We had a, we had a lady evangelist uh, from um, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, come to our church. And that woman was, she was a feisty person. And she preached strong. And while she was there, she had a word of knowledge. And here's a guy sitting on the second row. And she says, sir, God is healing you. right." And he was deaf. Believe it or not, here's another deaf person. And she said, God's healing you. And he didn't, couldn't understand what she was saying, but his ears opened up. And he couldn't, and he could hear. Now he couldn't talk well because if you can't hear, you can't talk right. But he could hear, and he was really excited. And and we got people that knew sign language. And he began to talk a little bit, you know. But it was really hard to understand. And uh, he was not saved. In fact, you know what he said to us because we talked to him afterwards. He said, "I came to this church invited by a friend. I'm a chef in a local restaurant." He said, I've been deaf a long time. He said, but I came here in search of truth. I'm looking, listen, he said, I'm looking for the true God. Wow. And when he said that, the staff team, us, we said to him, well, you found him. His name is Jesus the Christ. Isn't that awesome? So, so that's, that's, that's the gifts of the Spirit in manifestation. And this guy, he wasn't looking to be healed. He was just there checking us out to see what we believe. So, uh, but uh, the gifts of the Spirit, uh, but, but you can also receive healing by faith. The centurion, Matthew 8, 8, answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I'm a man under authority, having the soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes to another, come, and he comes to my servant, do this, and he does it. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, uh, I have not found such great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say to you, many will come from the east, west, sit down with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, but the sons of the kingdom will be cast into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way. As you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed in the same hour. That servant was, wasn't healed through, through gifts of the Spirit, was healed by his, his master's faith. You get it? Now, that's incredible to think about. Um, uh, here it is again. Jesus, here's, here's some guys who had a sick friend. You want these kind of friends if you're having a hard time. Matthew 9, 1. He got into a boat, crossed over, came to his own city. Behold, they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, that is the combined faith of the guy's the four guys that were carrying his bed because he was paralytic, he was paralyzed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven you. And at once the, some of the scribes said within themselves, this man blasphemes. But Jesus, knowing the thoughts, why do you think evil in your hearts? Which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say arise and walk, but that you may know the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins? He says to the paralytic, arise, take up your bed, go to your house. And he arose, departed to his house, now, when the multitude saw it, they marveled, glorified God, which had given such power to men. What was the catalyst for that healing miracle? It was, it was the faith of the four that were carrying the guy, right? So, again, you got, you got gifts of the Spirit, which God initiates the healing. And then you've got, a gift, you've got healing by faith in God's Word where we initiate. So I want you to get it set in your thought patterns that... If sickness comes on you, you don't have to wait on spiritual gifts. You can receive a manifestation by believing for healing with your own faith. How many get it? I've got a bunch more here, but I'm not going to take time to read them. So I also want to say this, you know, so, so, you know, so I have frequently have this question. So you say, well, pastor, so I'm believing God. I'm believing I receive healing for X, Y, Z, illness, sickness. And, uh, but somebody comes, or maybe you have a word of knowledge, because sometimes I have a word of knowledge, and I'll say somebody's here with X problem, and maybe you're believing God currently to be healed of that. The question is, should I go up? The answer is yes. Because if a gift of the Spirit manifests, take advantage of it. How many hear what I've just said? 
It's, it's not denying your faith. So if you haven't received the manifestation of your healing and you believe you receive your healing and you're messing with the symptoms and believing and standing against them, if, if somebody does that, if you're in a service somewhere and they call out what that is you're believing you receive, go up there and get them, let them lay hands on you. It's not, a, it's not a sign of unbelief to do so. How many just hear me? Unless the Lord speaks to you and says, I've had him speak to me at times say, you don't need to do that. I say, I got it. And I got my healing. So I can't think of a thing that I pray for I, I didn't get healed of. Did y'all hear what I just said? Sometimes you got to make adjustments. Now, I did have my appendix removed, but the Lord spoke to me to have it removed because it had already burst and sepsis was all over my abdominal cavity. And the doctor, great doctor, said, you know, if you'd born 100 years ago, you'd be dead. And I said, well, thank you for telling me that. That makes me feel so good. So anyway, I obeyed God, and I'm okay, and I'm here today, and that was in 2004.